Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And today, we're going to talk about uh, things we're going to do to try to improve our Commander experience. Uh, so maybe play better, have more fun. I don't know. Just when you walk away from your game of Commander, you are generally more happy. Uh, so join with me, Saffron Olive. How are you doing? Doing good. Would have been better if my Kill Crim first heading hadn't got crossed off of our list, but I guess that was mm-hmm. a little too personal for this episode. But otherwise, I'm doing doing wonderful. Wait, oh, why? Firing <laughs> shots already. <laughs> oh. Tomer, Budget Commander, how are you doing? It's so strange that I also had Kill Crim first, and yet <laughs> it's also got so a weird. Don't believe his lies was on my arm for some reason, and I don't know. <laughs> what <laughs> happened? Hello, hi, I just got here. What? <laughs> Krim, uh, you've been uninvited to all of our games. Today. I don't know what happened. Uh, <laughs> it's how's it going? The Asian Avenger, what's up? I don't know. I guess I just work here. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Hello, hi. Uh, don't kill me first. I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> Hello. And I'm the Codfather Richard. And uh, don't worry, Krim, I got you. I didn't put kill Krim first. <laughs> I put Krim kill, kill Krim second so that he walks away happy. <laughs> <laughs> I Thank got you. you. I got you. Thank you. What a, what a great father-son duo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I, cho- I chose your, your, your older brother first to win. You get second. <laughs> that's, okay. that's fair. I get it. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. It's their turn on the Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so before we get into today's show, today's show is brought to you by Ultimate Guard, premium protection for your trading cards. All the gaming accessories we use on this channel should fly by Ultimate Guard, so you can flick your cards silky smooth like saffron olive. By the way, we're going to make a video of this. We're gonna, Are we? I, I, we're going to make a shuffling have, video of Seth shuffling so have we you, can all die a little inside. <laughs> have you ever seen the pretty I iconic just, just like see it. Kibler yeah. every damn shuffling video to the every yeah. damn shuffling song? We should do a spoof on that with me shuffling and just like fumbling the cards and <laughs> it would be so I, I actually, I need someone to lend me their Power 9 vintage deck so I can uh, <laughs> recreate Seth Not shuffling again. and Not again. immensely. I don't know who would actually uh, want to give you that, but. We don't, but they'll, they'll, they'll have to lose something, and that's their punishment. Uh, today's show is also brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. Their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value of $1 more, and you pay just a 5% service fee. You can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and pay only 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. You can get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash Goldfish. So thank you to our sponsors, and it's time. So now it's time for the Ultimate Guard comment of the week. In last week's podcast, we talked about, uh, the topic was, your deck isn't casual if you play these cards. And the top voted comment was from uh, Godzijitrefer. Oh boy, these YouTube names. <laughs> uh, I was going to say that I've been loving the past month of podcasts between Family Feud, Smallest Hills You'll Die On, and now this, Y'all have had super interesting topics that aren't just talking about what new cards are good, and I love more of these podcasts. Thanks. Aww. Wholesome comment. Aww. Thank you. That's <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> way more wholesome than I expect. Really? Yeah, I know people are going to rip on us for being uh, too casual or getting good or something, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Beautiful <laughs> comment. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's jump into today's topic. So ways we're going to improve our commander experience. Uh, new year, new me. What am I going to try to do? I'll kick things off. Uh, th- this is going to sound funny because uh, I say this every year. I don't know if I do it. <laughs> Play a different style of deck. One where Spirited Companion is not good. <laughs> and for me specifically, I don't even want to use the dirty word combo. Okay. I, 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 I'm so <laughs> adverse. It gives me like hives just talking about it. I'm going to try non-combat finishes so like 99.9 percent of my games end with me swinging my creature sideways and hitting someone uh either with a big like crater hoof like effect or just chipping in with some spirited companions but uh maybe we try some burn maybe we try some i don't know alt win cons like mill them out uh, unfortunately, most of those will require the use of an infinite or another, <laughs> and I have to play combos, and it hurts my soul. Why? Uh, but yeah, I there, hate combos. There's hate combos. <laughs> there's many win the game cards. What about going against the odd style and just going yeah. cards that literally say win the game? There's like 
40 of them now or something. You do a whole year of trying to win with every one of those very easily. I think I think yeah. what Rich is trying to do actually very sneakily is he wants to defeat the fog meta. And he's yeah. found out. <laughs> he's found out the yes. line. He's found out the line. Somehow obscuring haze and whatever is not good against somebody just infinite comboing you to death with drain or whatever. <laughs> I think it's out. even more deep. True. It's more devious than that. Richard created the fog meta yeah. only so he could next know, level us all, by playing yeah. non-combat finishes. We're all yeah. loading up I, on I, I actually got the tech that you got. So you know there, there's like actual fog, which says prevent all combat damage. Yeah. Did you know there are cards that just say prevent all damage? <laughs> right? So if yeah. you play a burn deck or you play like creature-based burn or something, you can fog your way out of that one too. But you know what you can't fog your way out of? A Thorical win. <laughs> right, a yeah. lab man win. That's true. Uh, you you can actually it's called the uh, uh, angel's grace, platinum angel type effects, but those are a lot harder. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, fog meta. I don't want to play insult injury. We're just gonna go Richard... combo on you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was I appreciate sweet. this, by the way, that Richard wants to do this. But I feel like this is the you know how like every year the the beginning of the year. There's a like there's a surge in like gym membership sign up <laughs> that no one uses. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. you, know, I'm, you know what I'm gonna buy? I'm gonna buy a bunch of storm cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my binder and then okay. never take them out again. Yeah. yeah. That'll this be will my be that'll be binder. my buy the gym membership and never use it. I'll get some With build me. cards. I'll stick them in my binder. I'm like, I feel good about myself. We're, we're making progress this year. Oh, yeah. And then I'll sleeve up Spirited Companion. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. I've I've learned that it's just like, hey, you know what I said last year, too? That I'm going to get better and I'm going to get more fit. I'm going to do all these things. Yo, I, I noticed your arms this, this year, Grim. They're, they're looking swole. Yeah, they are. Well, they, they're exactly the same because I've done as many push as I have last year. To do that. Uh, so, like, <laughs> so I appreciate it, though, Richard, that you, you want to do this. That's great. Look, like, the, but... the first step is setting goals. Okay. Yeah. okay. And yep. uh, we got to work on executing the goals. <laughs> it's over. I mean, uh, hit us up with a, with a goal you may have for this year. Okay. I mean, you, a goal a, a, a goal you should have, Richard, is start getting ready to host tournaments to use that arcade cabinet behind you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't need a goal for that. That will just happen. Party at Richard. Oh, <laughs> oh, when is, oh it's Marvel vs. Capcom. I think we, we all just have it is. A, for, for our it audio is. listeners, I got a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cabinet for, oh. for Christmas. And uh, it's super I've sick, been and I'm uh, jealous. very humbled quite quickly <laughs> at how complicated of a fighting game MVC2 is, uh, which I did not remember from my high school days. <laughs> Uh, you always but... think it's fun, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get paired against Storm, Magneto, Sentinel, and then you never touch the ground again, and then it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's so many infinites in the game, it's, like, not balanced at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. this is not an MVC2 cast. <laughs> Tomer, hit us up, <laughs> hit us up with, uh, with an improvement tip here. All right, so uh, I have one that I think is, is, a, is a noble goal. Uh, but something that applies specifically to me mostly. And it's trying to be less salty. And also play to be invited back. I feel like a lot of time we get in the weeds of like trying to maximize our win percentage, angle shooting and everything like that. You know, like the point of the game is, you know, winning at all costs and whatever. And like that is that is that is still a, a, a fine thing to do. Like you should be playing to win and whatnot. I think that's still the case. But I think at the end of the day, like Commander is a social game and it I I think it should be treated kind of like any other board game you're sitting down with some friends or some strangers who can be friends um and you're trying to have fun together as a as a group so i think the the number one thing that i need to work on is sometimes i get a little bit salty i get a little bit salty if i'm getting targeted or I'm losing a lot and you know what that just is a bummer for everybody and i think the, the i want to what i'm trying to do is i'm going to cut back on the sodium i'm going to eat healthier you know less sodium in the diet and I'm just going to try and uh, be a little bit less salty, play to be invited back. So everybody's having a good time, myself included. I think if I try to be less salty, then I'm going to enjoy the games too, even if I'm losing the exact same amount or whatever, targeted targeted the same amounts too. And I think one one trick that I've I've been doing recently that I think actually helps is 
complimenting other people on their decks and especially when they're winning because i feel like even if like i i think like ah oh, whatever it was a stupid combo or whatever if i say <laughs> it was a cool combo literally it tricks my brain into thinking it was actually a cool combo and i i enjoy it more when i compliment people it actually works on me so i don't know that's my that's my thing that's... This is this is where for the rest of the year you're just gonna be it, it, you're gonna have one eye twitching <laughs> and you say that's a sick deck when dude. I get beaten out bullies <laughs> with your leveler wheel crib. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> very like, like, cool next time we play <laughs> that's next time I play with Krim like, Krim beam town bullied like levelered me to death and no he also made me lose my my turns for like the next two turns or whatever and then he I did... and then he decked me I have to yes. I have to play that with a straight face and I need to compliment him and that's my new year's resolution <laughs> you think you could really do it because your eye was you must there was must have been like a lot of like sand or something in your eye oh, oh that was a great deck crew that was really creative i really liked it that's what i'm imagining I, for the rest of this year oh that's so uh, oh that was so I, cool that's such a cool deck <laughs> dude <laughs> I, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I think Tomer's got a really good point. We often talk about like how the goal of commander is for everyone to have fun. And we think about that in gameplay when we're like, okay, maybe I'm not going to put Armageddon in this deck because people don't have fun if their lands are blown up or uh, things like that. There's so many of these social norms around commander, but we don't always connect that to like, how we are at the table and like how we act like because that's a part of everyone having fun too right is like your experience with the other people that your friends or could be future friends with at the table so i think it's a really good that's a really good reminder that the the actual game of uh, commander is really like a social experience and there's more to it than just like the cardboard in your deck so i i really like that one that's a good choice it's it's just a metaphor for life. <laughs> yeah, you can apply right. this to everything. <laughs> be be a nice person, and people will invite you back. <laughs> be a happy go lucky, <laughs> you know, morale booster, and people will want you around. Versus uh, being kind of the negative or salty person, and maybe people tolerate you, and maybe yeah. they don't. Right. So yeah. yeah, it's always like I mean, I like it. That, that's that's exactly okay so funny enough you know nod back to uh joey schultz from the edh rec cast hmm. actually kind of has a video about this too and uh, i talked about it recently so uh and, and it was just like really nice of him to uh compliment me and whatnot in that in that regard of like hey you know like play be be cool be a nice person right and i i i agree with that right like everything tomer also just said there just like it, it it's a deck. The deck choice doesn't change it, right? Mm -hmm. Like just because like they play a control deck, just because they play, you know, all these things. It's really how I like know. they Perfect. like just carry themselves and like how fun they were at the table, right? Like not saying like you know, oh well, hey, he's a cool guy, so he showed up and played the hard stacks or whatever, right? Like I, I, I don't know. I mean, point here is like what Joey mentions and what Tomer is getting at. I think is is true, right? Like just go there, be a cool dude. If you get if you get dumpstered, then you get dumpstered, but be cool, right? Like, don't be a weenie hut junior about it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like, like I think that's the best way about it. Like, really, it's the mentality you have when you're getting beaten down or when you're winning or whatever. Point here is, like, just carry yourself in, like, a respectable manner and, you know, be cool to everyone else. All right. Uh, good segue into a crim. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I put on. <laughs> so let, 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 let me. Let me think. I was oh. looking at that. Oh, list. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, no. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, well, let me tell you. So what I was gonna do was so this. I think something I wanted to do this year was play less control cards. I'm just kidding. I would never say that. Uh, so uh, playing more combo decks actually, because I'm always going to have the reputation of someone that's going to have control cards yada 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 so you know like like they said at the beginning of the cast here tomer and and seth kill crim first right so like like if i have that reputation then does that does it become this like self-fulfilling prophecy <laughs> where i need to be killed first so i should just combo because i realize when we do our stats right or when we did our stats i always come in at with zero combo kills Big zero. Everybody assumes I have a combo. Everyone's like, oh, Crim's a guy that would play th like Thoracle Demonic Consultation randomly. 
which I don't ever. Uh, but you know what? The point is, if I have that reputation, sh should I not play more combo cards? Because <laughs> then if I have Arch Enemy a tag to me, right? Then should I not have a way to get me out of the position <laughs> in case I am the Arch Enemy? And so also, I just don't ever play control. So... I, I mean, not control, uh, combo. I never play combo. So I may as well try to get better in departments that I don't normally play. Like, I mean, it's funny because I actually, <laughs> I have played more mono green before I've played a combo deck. I play <laughs> so play few combos. <laughs> I, I like <laughs> one thing that we like y'all like might meet you, you meme on it. But like when we deck build, the one thing I actively try to go and do when I build my deck is are there infinites and can how can I remove them? Like, I just remove infinites all the time. Not because, like, I frown upon you for playing an infinite combo. I just personally don't like playing them, right? Just for myself, right? So I need to change that part. So in a way, yes, I do need to find a, to, a way to play a different style like Richard mentioned. But it's more of a specific style that I need to play. Uh, so I want to try to play more combo. I'm a little scared yeah, that I'll see you on the other yeah. side of our binder full of combo <laughs> pieces that we're two to play. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. I'm wait, 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 yep. I know exactly. You're going to put the combo in your deck, and then you're like, wow, I got 130 cards. Got to make some cuts. Okay. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, no, 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 this, this combo is like too easy. Yeah. We just cut it out. We don't need this one, right? And then, yeah. and then cut Combos out the, take the up four next slots. 20 basics, and then you're done. Uh, <laughs> how, does, yeah, yeah. how does Crim's deck find room for combos when you have 10 Rass, 10 counters? counters. Like, how, how do you find room for a combo? Combo is there. Well, those, those are actually the decks where you need combos. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so every player that says they run like 13 pieces of spot removal, their win con has to be two cards. Right. Yeah. Because right. otherwise, you can't fit a critical mass of cards to win. Like, if you're trying to make like eight creature drops plus an overrun, like, you don't have room for that. So, if you are running that much interaction, you have to be running like a two or three card combo and then a bunch of tutors to tutor up either interaction or your combo. And then do the thing. Mm -hmm. So Brixis, that's why Krim Jeff can't guy win. Randomly has no go to hell. Finishers. But like <laughs> <laughs> randomly just go to hell. It's so weird that's because Kiki it. combo. Kiki combo. Kiki, Krim. Kiki combo. I'm taking a book out of Tomer. 2024 is <laughs> like, the year of Kiki combo, right? We're bringing it back. <laughs> taking a page out of Tomer's <laughs> book. Going Kiki combo randomly all the time, every time. I also think. I don't know. I feel like there's a stigma against combo, and I think we kind of perpetuated a little bit too because I I think we all kind of avoid it. I know when we were doing stats regularly, the amount of combos wins would be like maybe like five percent of games, ten percent of games maximum, like five out of all like of the twenty five. No, actually not. <laughs> I would get They're like kiki two combo. maybe. Uh, but like I don't know. I feel like there's a stigma against combos, and I just don't think. It's fair because, like, like there's f combos. The f efficacy or power level of combos is a spectrum, just like combat kills. Like, the most powerful combat finishers, like a Chroma's Will and Crater Hoof, are very, very powerful. And they're going to be more powerful at the end of the day than, like, a six-card combo that takes 20 mana to, to actually pull off, right? Like, that would be a low-spectrum combo. So, at the high-spectrum combo, there's, like, that that's his oracle wins with with consultation or whatever don't run those at, at low power tables but if you're at low power table yeah if you bring out your eight card janky combo why not or if you if even if you have a three card combo that takes a lot of mana and it's very easily interactable i don't know i think that should be fine at like casual tables i don't know i feel like sometimes i, mean, I agree it's not if there's like a stigma against it Ugh. i think you're right but i it don't doesn't... even have five card combos <laughs> Like I, I break only, those. Only two I, cards. I truly look through my <laughs> deck just to make sure there are no ways I can win out of nowhere. Like there's just absolutely no way. I am truly trying to grind you down. <laughs> I think I think part of the problem is like the easy way to do it is throw in the popular two card combos, right? You're like, yeah. oh, I need a way to finish the game, Thoracle. Oh, I need a way to finish the game, Goto Helm. Oh, I need a way to finish the game, Kiki Jiki. And I think people get sick of that. But if you're doing something that's like not that and is different and creative, I think that should be on the table, right? Like that shouldn't be frowned on. So Remember, I'm all about seeing like cool, unique combos. I would get tired of seeing Kiki or Thoracle every game. But yeah, so I think you're right. It definitely is a spectrum. One of my favorite two-card combos from the season was actually one of Seth's. It was Fractured Identity with Phage. Two cards, but it was freaking awesome, right? Like, you played Phage, you cast uh, Fractured Identity, 
exiling yours, making copy for each opponent, and then Fitch has a special clause that says if it, if it enters the battlefield and wasn't cast, you lose the game. So all of us lost the game all at the same time. It's two cards, but it was a lot of yep. mana, and there's room for it to fail horribly. And I thought that was amazing. And I'd much rather see that than like the 150th Crater Hoof or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. Maybe I'll play more combos too. <laughs> Kiki oh, God, everyone's going to play. I have to play Spirit of Companion. <laughs> Everyone else can play combo. Like, I just have to, guys, just to balance it out. It's a non combat finisher, Richard. You can get it, you can do it. You can join in. <laughs> uh, all right, Seth, hit us up Ooh, with a uh, way to improve our commander experience. All right, so I, I, I titled this Be the Change That You Want to See in Your Game of Commander. But what I'm thinking of here, so a, a few days ago, I tweeted something about one of my New Year's resolutions being to play less Teferi's Protections. And that's actually one of my New Year's resolutions. Teferi's Protection is a card that I always complain about. I feel like it's too easy, a little bit too high powered. I feel like sometimes it leads to anti-climatic endings where someone does re something really cool and then someone's just like, oh, I got Teferi's Protection. <laughs> So, like, there's a lot of things I don't like about it, but I still put it in my deck every single time I'm running white because I feel like, oh, everyone's everyone's doing it. I got to play this because it's so powerful. I got to do it to keep up with everyone else that is playing this. So I want to stop doing that. Like, it doesn't mean no one else should play Teferi's Protection, but just because Teferi's Protection's really strong and everyone's playing it doesn't mean I got to put it in my deck. It's, like, fine to leave that card out. So that's something I'm working on is if there's a card that I don't like or I don't like the play pattern, rather than, like, just complaining about it, maybe I just stop playing it. And I don't know, maybe other people, if they feel the same way, they'll stop playing it eventually, and then Commander will be uh, an even more fun place. Wow, you try to ban my boy to fear. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not saying you guys need to stop playing to fairies. You the game you want to see. <laughs> so you're leading by example by not playing to fairies in hopes to get our viewers to not play to fairies protection. <laughs> and no. soft banning it from the format. Seth no, finds it's more those like... games. Seth finds those games less interesting. So if he removes it from his decks, then there's less times they're not gonna happen as often yeah yeah well happen less often for him right so i mean i think that's fine. i lead by example maybe you shouldn't play to fairies protection because then tomers will randomly kill you while you're still fading <laughs> out you know <laughs> what i mean so like maybe maybe you're right maybe actually. you should abide by the rules of the fairies protection to <laughs> yeah. yeah. kill them maybe it's a fairies apparently the fairies hugs don't save you so, I, no, like, I, I agree with i you know i i believe i believe seth as well right that's why i play uh i, I agree with that sentiment that's why i play so many oppo agents and things to deny searchers so then I will into it <laughs> that people stop searching and also <laughs> stop drawing additional cards. There you so go. So all I do, so again, my deck list, again, kind of tying it back, that's why I can't get win cons uh, in my deck, is because I'm <laughs> too busy lo like denying card draw, wiping the board, yeah. and preventing stuff. Altruistically, but, yeah. He, the Krim is for the good of the format. I <laughs> like notion to, but you know what? Position agents. And, and Krim does it maybe, too. Maybe I need to retire this card, <laughs> yeah. sort of body in mind, because yeah. it's too Crap. good. It's too good. It's too good. A, and but like, but like, because I don't want to get paired against it. And on, in reality, though, I I do think that it's fair for for you to want to lead by example. Obviously, to to have ha, have a better play experience for yourself, right? Like whatever that means. You also don't run like Krim. Also does it too, right? You you don't run extra turn spells. That's a Not that's a choice. Yeah. yeah, you don't like them, so you don't yeah. run them. Or another one for me. I'm is not. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't. No. Right. You can do whatever the hell you want. I just don't do it, yeah. right? Another one for me is like Fierce Guardianship. I just really hate Fierce Guardianship. Everyone else plays it because it's really powerful. Do I think it should be banned and no one should play it? No, like it's a, like a busted but fine card. But I just choose to not put it in my deck because I don't want to like play it. And I don't, I don't like how it plays. So I think that... I, I think that the bottom line is it's a casual format, right? And like it's fine to make suboptimal decisions that makes the game end up in a place that you want it to end up in and be an experience that you enjoy, even if it, you're not playing all the most powerful cards or busted cards. Like, it's perfectly fine to to make those choices. Like, you know how me and... Deck building choices. Yes. You know how yeah. me and Seth, we we don't like uh, Sol Ring that much. I still got Sol Ring a lot of my decks. I'm not telling my opponents, oh, don't run Sol Ring or whatever. I also don't run Rhystic Study or Smuggling Tab because I just don't like having those in the at the table or at, in the I've, board game so i'm lessening those by not having them in my decks 
I've been thinking about taking soul rings out of my paper decks. We never play them on Clash, but I have always left them in my, like, bring it to a Magic Con deck on the, like, everyone's doing it justification. But yeah. it might be one of those things where, you're like, just take it out. Like, eh, whatever. It's funny when we sit down and then people, like, take out their soul rings because they're playing with us. But I'm like, oh, but I put a soul ring in my yeah. deck because I've had Magic Con. <laughs> Oops. <Yeah. laughs> I was, <laughs> Whoops. I was like that for, like, a year. I have a play group. Uh, I, I, sec- uh, I have a play group out, uh, in Canada that uh, they follow the Clash ban list. So they don't have Smothering Tide. They don't have Ristic Ooh. Study. They don't have Soul Ring. They don't have Mana Crypt. Or, and they don't have Dockside. And I was playing with them for like... I like how they work. Yeah, I was playing for them for like half a year. And I was the only one of Sol Rings in my deck. And I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe I should, t- maybe I should take it out. Like I- so, <laughs> you're metagaming them? Hold on. Oh. My decks always had Sol Rings. So yeah, I took them out eventually. And I, I, didn't, I don't miss them or anything. And I don't like look at people funny when they play Sol Ring against me. It's just like, I... Don't like Soul Ring in my deck, so I took it yeah. out. That's all. It's fine for me. My decks Tomer's are still out here, just meta gaming people. The reason why we say this is so that we can bring our Soul Ring. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, my next way to improve my experience this year is to play more bad cards, and there, there's two categories of bad cards. Right there, there is one in which you think they are bad, and everyone else thinks they're bad. Right. And then there's cards where everyone thinks they're good and you think they're bad. Uh, I have one card in specific. And no, it's not Swords to Plowshares. I know that's bad. And I I played for like literally like eight years. It's actually Wedding Ring. So Wedding Ring is actually like very expensive. A lot of people play it everywhere. And I simply do not understand why uh, it is so. So I'm just going to jam it everywhere (laughs) until. And so I'm like, yeah, I, I actually have a definitive answer of what I think, right? My intuition is it's not very good, but everyone loves this card. What does like, Wedding Ring do? Surely they must be onto something. What does it do? So Wedding Ring I don't know what this is, is a four mana artifact, I believe, uh, that when you, you cast it, you give someone else a copy of it. And then when, when an opponent who controls an artifact in Wedding Ring draws the card during their turn... You draw a card, and when they gain life, you gain life. So you basically are tied with someone. This might actually work out swimming, swimmingly well, because I'll just always marry Phil. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. It seems, like, very sussy, right? Like, they, you're relying <laughs> on someone to pop off, and then you got to pop off with them. And it can go wrong in very many ways. Like, they could just not pop off. And, you know, they could pop off and kill you. Like, you're not really helping. So I don't know. But this card is very popular. People always put it in all their decks. It is their white card draw. So I want to try this card. Uh, and I don't know why I'll put it in my deck. I'm just going to put it in and then see what happens. And that's the only way for you to improve your card analysis, right? Like, to, to see, like, oh, yeah. you know, does it actually work out? And what, what, what are people actually talking about? Uh, and then make your own conclusion. Because sometimes it, it, pro- it might play a lot better or a lot worse than what you think. Uh, in a vacuum like fade away everybody says it's bad but then you play it and you're like oh my god <laughs> didn't you come just out and say really it was bad, bad. Tomer, i believe we have you on on camera just all right, all right, all right. it's not that good but college is actually good so try that <laughs> the expose <laughs> <laughs> I, I I agree with that. Like, there's a lot of cards that you know you see a lot of play, and we can dismiss it very quickly. But some of them have a lot of text, like Wedding Ring, and I honestly have no idea how it would play out because I've never seen it in a game. And yeah, it could actually be good. Who knows? I could see like if you're like an impulse draw deck, you know, you're adding red, and you have like a lot of like exile top of card library. You can play that this turn. Then you can get around like giving your opponent lots of card draw. And then you draw you reap the benefits. That could be cute. Or maybe you just want to make an ally at the table. You know, you'd be like, hey, Phil, these two people, they're they're doing crazy things, but we're we're chill, right? Want to marry me? And he'd be like, Yeah. And then that's it. Right? That could be good. I'm, you're just making an ally at the table. That's like the Squid Games 101. No, but it's you're you're bonded forever. You see, unlike a secret rendezvous where you can just make a point in time. That's like a <laughs> That's like a one night stand or something, right? Wedding ring is like bonded for life there, right? So when Phil starts popping up hard, shotgun you can't pick up wedding, Phil, 
<laughs> get off this train, right? No, no, no. You're you're in here, right? So that's kind of the problem with this. But you're on that train. He's card. drawing like 50 cards. You're like, hell yeah, buddy, keep going. And you're drawing 50 cards. Yeah, but like you're like, oh, I need to answer Phil. Okay, how do I answer Phil? I gotta draw more cards. And then Phil draws more cards. You're like, oh no. Our bank our bank accounts are burned. You can file for divorce. You could disenchant it. Pre prenups are dope. <laughs> that, yeah. That's expensive. You got to get a lawyer. You got to come in here. You got to split the assets. Who gets the kids? I don't know. This is very messy, Tomer. You don't want to be down this path. <laughs> uh, okay, Tomer. Oh. Hit us with the way to improve your commander experience. All right. So I have a lot of decks. And also when I was on Commander Clash, uh, we would build decks every single week. And I have like 20 plus decks at this point between like the collection behind me. If you're watching it on video, uh, I don't get to play them that often. So when I play them, I don't know what half the cards are and there's tutors and I don't know what's going on. So, and I'm also just a slow player in general. You, you all can attest, even when I have a deck that I'm actually knowledgeable about, I take my time. You know, math is not my strong suit. Um, so... I slow play sometimes. And I notice also like on Commander Clash is very noticeable because we have timers. And I notice that I'm usually like 10, 10 minutes uh, shorter on time than the rest of you all. So the one way I think will actually help me is gold fishing more. I should just play my decks by myself, just see the lines and practice it by myself so that when I actually play with people, I'm not wasting people's time as much. I just want to speed up my play. And I think that's going to be beneficial for me because it will give me, if I speed up my play, that means I can think more of my lines better, think through my lines better and make better plays. But also I'm not going to be wasting my opponent's time as much too. So goldfishing more. I'm going to be trying to goldfish more while I'm doing other things, like waiting for a video to export. I can goldfish. Who knows? That's actually a really good idea. I've never, I've never really done that much. I'm curious for the rest of you. I know for Commander Clash, a lot of times our episode is the first time I play the deck. Is that true for most of you guys as well? Or do you actually get in some test games? Because we're building new decks every single week. Well, it's hard to really get in test games. Yeah. Like, do you get in test games, Tomer? Or are you playing in the dark usually? I've, I've only practiced the CDH games because it's like, okay, half the deck is tutors. I guess I should give it one or yeah. two spins beforehand, you know? <laughs> Otherwise, yep. it's just like, man, let's go for it, right? And yeah. But I, I don't tested uh, maybe twice all last season. And that's usually when I have like a complex combo interaction that I need to make sure I understand how to stack my moto triggers in the right order and not moto fail myself. Yep. Uh, so that is the only time to do it where there's like timing of like triggers and stacks or maybe once in a while if I'm not sure if a rule interaction works. <laughs> uh there was this one time. There's this one time I I tested uh, a rules interaction and like Moto just simply did the rule thing wrong and I had to disassemble an entire deck. Oh, oh. It couldn't. It was those like blue cards that change like uh, color oh. instances on a word. Yeah. None of them work oh. for Moto. Uh, <laughs> Wait, really? I love the, the they don't I, work. that's that's like my favorite kind of deck. Okay. Uh. The, the UI like straight up doesn't work. <laughs> like, like choose a color. Like Brutal. it doesn't have anything to choose. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so very rarely, very rarely. I just wing it most of the time. Yeah, I, do, I mean, like, I don't think I ever play test any of my decks, like, like, unless we do one that like of a deck I actually have in paper. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it's like, well, here we go, <laughs> here, we, here we go, <laughs> clash out, uh, oh, well, uh, and and sometimes it works, and sometimes I sit there on three lands and I politely stare at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and pray for sweet mercy and a, re a quick release. Well, I guess I guess being stuck on three lands is good, but like I'm talking about the times where it's like, oh, I'm popping off, and I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing here. It's like yeah. I have 15 cards <laughs> in my hand. What's the line? I have no idea. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, figure out the line. Lily, let's yeah. help you with that, Tomer. You, you Let me can check do it, your buddy. hand. You yeah, can you do go. it. Come on. Go. We got, we got, we got, we got places we're rooting, to we're rooting to for go, you. Tomer. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Show us Kiki fiber. Tomer. That comes with his deck. <laughs> yeah, I used to read the fish. <laughs> I usually go to my budget commander primer that I wrote while a while yeah. back, and I'm like, oh, all right. Oh, wow. this is how, how I, it works. What did I write here? Uh, <laughs> what? Why would I write that? I would never play that. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> what was I thinking? All right. Prim, hit us with a way to improve your commander game. <laughs> all right. Time to do my best Gendo from Evangelion here. Uh, all right. So that's me crossing my fingers uh, and then putting them in front of my mouth and letting people know. I need to find out this year, and I need to find out soon and fast. Find out how to punish the ramp decks without doing Armageddon. <laughs> we talk about it all the time, right? We talk about it all the time. You know, oh... Land destruction is taboo. You can't do it, right? So if you can't blow up the lands, which is totally fine, how can we still dumpster? To, and dumpster is me putting it family friendly. <laughs> I, there's another way I would describe it. that I, 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 There was an action I would like to do, uh, and it would be to be destroying, completely poo-pooing all over the ramp decks. <laughs> so I need to figure out what that is, and I need to figure that out. It's I want that. That's my goal this year. One, they that have is plot one armor. Of my other goal. I know. Yeah. Plot, <laughs> armor. You already... plot armor to land ramp. <laughs> I think you already run there the best is... one, right? Opposition agent. Like all these land ramps, yeah. like, search your library for a land, right? And just like, how do you nah. beat them with just. You got to find it. Yeah, right? you got to find you it. You all will it into existence when you play against me <laughs> because for some odd reason, whenever I play against you, you just it. say, oh, Krim has it. And then I conveniently just draw it, right? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well,. But in, in reality, right, like when I go to real life and less digital, I never seem to draw opposition agent. <laughs> and and uh, like, I, I don't know, there needs to be more oppo agents, but like what else could there be? I mean, there's got to be something else. Does opposition agent actually feel meaningfully less worse than just pulling up a land? Like, I guess it maybe does, but I'm still not sure that like, I don't know. It's going to make people Blood happy. <laughs> I, I like, mean, people love is this Blood even, Moon. Is this a salvable problem? Like, is there an answer to this problem? I'm not convinced that there is. Like, I think, oh, like, I wish there was, but I'm not sure an answer exists. And I'm not sure any of the answers that do exist are going to uh, make you very good friends with the rest of the table, <laughs> unfortunately. Ignore them and cop will kill them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. essentially is your answer, right? You cannot interact. You're not, you're not allowed to interact with them. Well, like, due to... The, the the agreements we have made as a community on, on <laughs> what it means to land destruction. And there is no way to do it. Like you could like you could say like strip mine block them or something, right? Or you could wildfire, but that's frowned upon, right? Like you, you so even single targeted removal, like you get one strip mine use. The minute you loop it, everyone will be up in arms. Yeah. Uh there's nothing you can really do. The the closest thing I have found, the closest thing I have found is price of progress. Mm. So yeah. you're not allowed to blood moon people, but you can kill people. I don't know how salty people are gonna get. Okay, I, I ripped a few price of progress. I haven't seen the comments go nuts or anything. I don't know how salty people are gonna get, but that's a way to do it so that if they're non basics and they have a lot of non basics, they get they get got. But it's not a blood moon. It's not an Armageddon. Uh, so maybe something like that could work. What I I have a question for you. That could work. What do you think about? Like from the ashes, or some of these like mass from the ashes. So from the ashes from is the four ashes. mana. It destroys all non basic lands, but then everyone gets to search for basic lands for each one blown up. Like, is any of this is something like that? Is that it's that wasn't a commander <laughs> precon? That wasn't a commander <laughs> precon. It's great for like a blood precon. Precon. Is that no. too much still? Like or or like ah, it just that's makes still ruination. Just destroy all Wait the basic yeah, lands? Is that Wait still? a minute. That, that, that's Armageddon with like some extra clause that is probably not relevant to most people, right? Like, oh, just Wait play a all basics. I think... <laughs> Hold on. What? I think this... Is Seth cooking? Uh, is Seth I mean, cooking it, it softens the blow a little bit, right? Like, it, you're, you're not the bad guy. They can get their basics. They should have played basics. If you're playing a Tomer deck, it, you're fine. If you played a yeah, Richard yeah, deck, you're yeah, a deck, Tomer lifestyle of yeah. 400 basic well, that, lands. That's why, yeah, uh, but, like... So the, but Blood Moon is the exact same thing. 
No, the blood no, moon no, is not acceptable, right? Ah, no, 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 no. Like, this it's this not is really a one off. Same, yeah. Blood moon's always sitting out there. This is just like one shot. But the I mean, it's still brutal, colorless but... mana. Blood moon is way less harsh. I think. I think a lot of these, so they actually are the least effective on the the ramp player. Like, let's say I'm just playing like an Esper deck. I have no land ramp whatsoever, but I have a lot of like mana fixing lands in my deck, and you blood moon me. I'm not going to be able to cast most of my spells. But if somebody's land ramping, especially basic land ramping, they're fine. They have okay, some some more red sources than they would like, but they have basics and they're doing fine. Same so even with like this from the ashes too. I feel like this actually benefits like the landfall deck. Like imagine you have like a Lotus Cobra or like a Tireless Tracker on the battlefield, and somebody says, "Hey, get to put five more lands onto the battlefield." And they're like, "Yeah, sounds great." <laughs> um. So I don't know. I like I like the anti shuffling or anti searching. I think that one actually hits them pretty hard. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, killing them before they get to do their thing. Like w remember when we were up against we did the co op Atraxa deck and we were basically glacial chasmed and field the dead locked and we just couldn't do anything about it because they had just a bunch of lands. Like what yeah. were our options? Our options were we could try to blow up all their lands. It wasn't working because they have all this recursion stuff. Or we just have to like find a way to kill them before they set up their thing. And I think that's the best way. You just you kill them. You just kill them. I mean... The change you want to see. We yeah. just all play Armageddon. Yeah. Or yeah. insult the injured. <laughs> insult the injured gets around the glacial chasm. Boom, you're done. You win. <laughs> The are we beating the fog meta or the ramp meta? Which yeah. one are we going? At I think it's here? both. You, <laughs> who's beating the fog? The Who's fog meta has counter. The ramp the meta doesn't meta. have a counter. There's no counter to the ramp meta. You stranglehold them. Fog you opposition agent exist. them. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like stranglehold and op. Well, opposition agents only when I actually play. But what do, what do you think would happen if next year we go to Vegas or whatever and we all only played Armageddon decks all weekend? <laughs> like, do you do you think people would get like <laughs> what would what would happen? Uh, like, do you think people would be actually mad at us? Would we lose fans? Would they accept it because we're content creators and like laugh it off? Like, I'm actually really curious. Like, what happens if we just started playing it? I, I'll tell you I, what, I won't be happy. They, yeah, they, they will not it. be happy. <laughs> they may accept it that they got to play with us and got Armageddon. It's kind of funny. But that was probably not what they envisioned yeah. in their mind. Like, oh, I spent all year building this perfect deck to show Seth. Let's go. Okay, okay, okay. Seth, here we go. I got this really <laughs> cool combo. I just got to get to eight mana. Oh, you Armageddon me? <laughs> oh, okay. You're that kind of person in real life, huh? <laughs> I think it's ex expectations, though. Because remember how we, we played, like, Salt episode? And we were not salty at all. Like, it was, it was so chill. And the audience were super chill about it, too. Our viewers loved it, too. It's because we went in. We're like, hey. We're going to play a salty game. We're going to go stacks. You in for stacks? And everybody was like, yeah. And everybody was cool with it. But yeah, I think if you were like, hey, I'm going to play an Armageddon deck. You in? Then if they're in, then they're in. You know, like they're not going to be salty about that afterwards. Expectations. Because everyone, everyone max greeds. Right? If you know there's Armageddon in the meta, you will not just ramp out every land. You'll play you your real lands deck. back. You will, yeah. you will pace yourself. But everyone's used to just spewing all their stuff on the battlefield. And then when you get Armageddon, there's no more lands in your deck because you spewed them all out. And then you're never going to recover. And then you lose, right? So if you actually play around, it's not that bad. Uh, as we saw in our MLD deck week, right? Yeah. So Yeah. Um, you just have to be prepared for it. But why would you be prepared when it's like, ta like yeah. soft band? In the same way, you're prepared for counterspell. And you're yeah. prepared for board wipes. You're prepared for interaction, right? But we just, for some reason, do not want to be prepared for land destruction, right? My five-color deck has one basic in it. And that's just the path to exile basic. Like, if you blood moon me, I lose, right? But, like, I haven't been blood mooned in who knows how long. If you started blood mooning me, I'd had more basics. But why would I bother until then, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Seth, Ooh. hit us up. All right. I feel like this has been my resolution in the past, maybe. Maybe not. Uh, but it's don't feel bad about attacking someone or even just killing someone. I always feel every year, so Seth. guilty. Every year. And I still yeah, always feel year. guilty. I can't get over <laughs> that guilt. Like, I just got to gotta be able kill to do me, it. What Seth. am I doing? What am I doing kill wrong? How, <laughs> how do you guys mercilessly just beat someone down and sleep at night? Tell me, crew. Tell me. Give me, give me your wisdom. How do you Look. sleep at night and do it? <laughs> 
you t- you look at your cards and you see how many of them can go sideways. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that's that's usually how it goes. Oh, oh, do you have a combo? You do it. Oh. <laughs> it's not, just play your blink decks every single time. I'll beg for death. I'll be like, please, <laughs> me first. Send those mold drifters. Send those please. two twos yes, at me, <laughs> Seth. I beg you. I won't block, please. I won't block. <laughs> I beg for the sweet release. <laughs> Do do you think it's people's reactions? Like if, if everybody was like happy go lucky and like not salty or not like pouty or whatever, do you think it's because that people <sighs> don't look like they're having fun when they're dead? I know it's kind of hard, but you know, like I mean, why why don't we just kill people? Why don't we just progress the game? That's definitely part of it. I've definitely experienced games at like Command Fest where like someone's playing Voltron and takes out someone else super early and they sit there for like two hours like a sad puppy and watch the rest of the game and it just like becomes increasingly sadder. I'm like, you know, you can like go get some food or like you don't have to just like sit here and look sad for two hours. Like, I know, like I feel bad. So I think that's part of it, right? You feel bad for the person who got taken out. Maybe they're salty. Maybe they're sad. Maybe want to do something cool and uh, didn't get a chance to do it. So I think that is a part of it at least, but I'm not sure if that's even all of it. I think I got in my head that like, I don't know. I always think in commander, I want everyone to do their thing and I want them a chance to have like a good experience and have fun. And sometimes when they're like, Oh, I can hatred kill you on Mm -hmm. turn five or something. I feel like that goes against like, the uh, that ideal for the format if that makes sense so i choose not to do it but then i regret it later and i'm like man i really should just like <laughs> kill that person like that was the right thing to do why didn't i just do it so i don't do you guys struggle with that at all or are you just like cool with taking someone out i get it but it's so fun because if you do it in any other game it's bm mm-hmm. right yeah. like, like like if i'm yeah. playing a fighting game with you and i'm about to perfect you i'm like oh oh this looks a little sad you get some free hits on yeah. me that's like pure bm yeah. right or yeah. you know if i'm yeah. playing starcraft and you're dead to rights and i'm Ooh. just like oh don't worry build a little rv over there you know like build up that's like bm why yeah. do we consider it a positive in commander to kind of just like leave and- someone around and let them catch up and whatever because we all and- do it like we all have that bad feeling and we all do it and it's somehow acceptable because is it because it's a multiplayer it's not it's- 1v1 I-, it- I think it's got to be because it even applies to other magic formats like i think it's bm in in 1v1 yeah. if you like have lethal and you leave that person alive and just kind of toy with them or whatever like that's considered <laughs> to be bm so it really is like it's got to be the multiplayer aspect the like communal co-op aspect of commander like that's got to be what makes it makes it feel bad it's a hundred percent it's like if you're in a fighting game and you're not taking out the opponent well like yeah you're bming them but like if you take out the opponent then you play the next game immediately whereas like in multiplayer like the game could go on for like an hour even longer so yeah that kind of sucks if the person gets taken out i personally only i I will take out the person Mm -hmm. if i think it will increase my odds of winning like if the person's like behind and not doing anything and there's i need help to take out other threats i'm not going to take out a person just because i can but if the person i i think is going to like win the game while next turn or something yeah he's gone he's gone even if it's like the 30 minute mark but i, I yeah I, I feel bad about it sometimes too i i i think the only time i've i've ever felt bad right is legitimately because like they have two lands they uh, played zero magic. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, well, I want them to like do something, right? Well, you do so, take them out if like, they have you know, two lands. I feel like you you keep them I'd around. Feel bad. I I I couldn't I that's where <laughs> why? I draw the line. Like, oh, they they didn't play any magic. Like I'm not talking somebody's like where... dog. It's like why, <laughs> why are you doing that? I'm not I'm not gonna do that. It's there, it's kickable. That? You haven't played any magic. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even talking like the illusion of playing magic where like, oh, you played a spell I counter. Uh. I'm talking about like like They've actually played, they didn't even have enough mana to make a misplay. Yeah. Or they didn't even have <laughs> enough mana to do anything, right? Th- then it's like, okay, now I feel bad. I can't I can't do that. You can't do that to them. I mean, like, if they're on Urza or something and they're on three lands, oh, I'm yeah, like, you're not them. getting right. to land like, four, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you can't okay, live. yeah, if you're playing Urza or something, <laughs> yeah. I'm killing you right yeah, yeah. right? But, like, like you I don't stumble, care how you that's your fault. I mean... <laughs> yeah, any art- artifact deck, I have Whoa. very, very little sympathy for. Whoa. Or, or again, ramp deck. But outside of those two, it's like, okay, you can play Magic. Richard, would you ruthlessly gun down somebody on two lands? <laughs> I <usually> don't. <laughs> like, what if it's Phil? Yeah, you what? Got- you gotta. Oh, you gotta. You gotta, right? 
Ugh. And usually yeah. they get worn down anyway because everyone has to attack them for like free value. And <laughs> yes, that's like, that's well, I gotta hit you with my eight power creature to drop card. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I need to gain some light. But yeah. like, <laughs> just a little off the top. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I feel bad. I know where sets come from. We all feel bad, but like. It's kind of dumb that we're all prolonging the game for like yeah. no reason. Maybe we should normalize leaving the table. Like, Maybe we should. If it's your normal play group, yeah, you're kind of stuck there. But if you're playing at a Magicon, like if you died on turn two, what use is it for you to sit here for the next like hour? <laughs> Uh, yeah. watching these people play you can just go to another game like maybe just normalize leaving and it, it doesn't make it not look like it's vm or something because it's it's kind of weird if someone leaves right so maybe just make that normal and then therefore people can just kill people and free them from the game then go play another game yeah then, but i would definitely i would feel way less bad if the person who dies early just like hop down the next table and jumped into another game than if they sit there and look sad for two hours so i think that would like solve at least the magic con part of it yeah, but like Magicon's not where most people play Commander, right? It's most people are like playing at a table together and that's it. It's not like you can't hop into a different game. <laughs> Go home. Yeah. Go home. I'm, peace out. Nice to see everyone this week. I'm, I'm down. Yeah. I'm driving home. Yeah. Like when I when I host when I had people over or whatever host games, like people will just like they'll go grab a sandwich. So they'll come back, they'll eat their sandwich and like chat with us while we're playing. We're finishing the game. I think that's the best way of doing it. Get a sandwich. All right. Uh, all right. I, I got a good one for you guys. This is weird that this was a revelation to me uh, this far into my career. But uh, I'm going to play cards with cool art. Wait. Even if they're suboptimal. Oh. So for example, Secret Lair Wrath of God. Before we got all these weird booby poster cards that are unreadable, we had an unreadable Wrath of God. It was like the... <laughs> I love that art. It looks amazing. I feel really good playing it, but it's Wrath of God. It's a four mana wrath. Destroy all creatures can't be regenerated. It, unplayable in white. White has so many better wraths, but I've been jamming it in Paper Baragon. I like it. I enjoy it. I cast it. It brings me happiness. I'm like, look at the art. It looks so cool. I feel good about myself. And uh, it kind of does, you know, it does like 70% of the job <laughs> of a real wrath. So <laughs> no. yeah, I'm going to play suboptimal cards with better art just just to feel cool just to be like yeah cool it's a it's a trading card game it's meant to look good i'm gonna play cards that look good rather than playing the sweaty option at least i'm gonna try to i respect that i mean i mean <clears throat> that's how commander should huge. be played right isn't that isn't that the whole yeah. idea of this format like play what you want play what you have play what you like like that that's what commander's is about it. so that yeah that's what it started with so more often than not that is why i choose certain cards it's just like, hey, I love this artwork. Like, it, like, why am I just loaded with all these, like, anime artworks and all of that, yada, 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 when there is, like, better cards? Well, <laughs> well, you know, there isn't an anime art of, that, uh, of a better <laughs> card. So I'm going to just keep playing all of the weird stuff and, like, stuff that's not really that good. Uh, and art is what got me into magic. Uh, the, the art style and a lot of the art cards as well, like the, just like Grinning Demon, all these cool cards. Like, Krim, why do you still play, you know, Shadow Mage Infiltrator, right? Like, it's like, oh, well, I, I like the art of that mm. as well. And so there's a lot of value to just, emo there's a lot of emotional value and that's, and sentimental value. So I, I'm down with that. I, I, I run some of those cards too that I just like the artwork of it. Like I have a Hebrew glory. It's the only Hebrew card in existence. And the card is like mid, you know, I've tried to put it in a lot of decks and it only really works in like a reanimator deck. It's when it's in the graveyard, it's like haste and wonder and all those stuff. But you have to pay, th uh, if you have it in the graveyard, you can pay three mana and give all your stuff protection from a certain color until end of turn. And it's okay. Like, it's fine, but like, I'll still jam it into a lot of white decks that it shouldn't be in just because I really like the art and I like that it's the only Hebrew card. And recently. Wait, how, how, how is there only one Hebrew card? It's what the only the Hebrew promo. I, I don't know. It was a promo. A from, single Hebrew card. From when it came out in Odyssey or whatever set in the 2000s. Like, that's the only card. But yeah, it's it's cute though. I like it. And then oh, uh, more recently, I don't like secret layers that often, but I did get one exception. Uh, it was the the artist for Metal Gear Salt for the Metal Gear franchise, oh, Yoji Shikawa. Yeah. He did a bunch yeah. of, of, of cards. I don't 
I wouldn't run like most of them. I'd normally run like the Skull Clamp and like the Psalm Simulacrum, but I'm also putting the Phyrexian Metamorph and my Tezzeret the Seeker into my artifact deck just because I love the art. You know what? Like I, I'm okay running cards that I would normally cut just because I love the artwork on them. Seth, do you have any any cute art <laughs> cards that you ever? It sounds like what is art? Like, what is these art? cards are just <laughs> blanks. I don't know. I I've gotten to like art more. I'm trying to think of any like special art cards that I always play. But I'm waiting for I, I don't the Marvel really... set. To... Yeah, once yeah. once Marvel comes. All right, out. would you play uh, an old border suboptimal card <laughs> because it's available at old border? Do you play? I can't even think. Oh, honest. <laughs> oh. No, I do, I really don't. Maybe I should. I like old border cards, but it doesn't really uh, it impact my like card choices. But maybe well, but I don't know. Maybe I should pour put more weight into the art. Do, what if you're like playing a Blood Moon deck? Do you not choose like your favorite Blood Moon art for, it, or are you just like ah whatever whatever oh, yeah. Blood Moons I can find, I just put them in. Well, that, that's in. given. That's yeah, good. right. Yeah. That's, that's our preference. I do. There. But do you? Yeah, play, I do that though. Know, but I Vegas don't like Vegas and the Moon because it has anime version. Yeah, see, that's <laughs> what I. Moon. That's what I. Yeah, right? That's the point I haven't remember. gotten to where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna drop this card and play a worse one because I like uh, the art yeah. better. I haven't started doing that yet. Yeah. Like you know, it's a good one, Masker Girl. We get, oh. we get Toxic Deluge out of here. We're gonna play <laughs> Anime Masker Girl. Like, that's a good one. I don't <laughs> believe you guys are actually gonna do that. I'll believe it when I see. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Deluge in your trade by. Are we gonna do any of these things? I don't Wait, so, have you? Didn't you build the, the 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 the? There's a there's a Seth card. Or there's a commander. It's Gruel and it attacks. It sneaks attacks and it looks exactly like you. Didn't you build that oh. deck because of the art? Oh, I guess. Well, that's true. I yeah, I did build my Hans Ericsson deck because it looked Hans like Ericsson. so. Maybe that counts. Maybe that's an maybe art. That that's actually art counts. counts. But that might just be ego or something, right? <laughs> like, it's like the magic card. <laughs> that's my invitational card. You guys stop. Yeah, yo, if, if uh, I got an art based on me, I'd pick that as my commander too. What do you mean? <laughs> Tomer, hit us with something that we may or may not do this year. <laughs> okay, okay. So this one is the only one that I was like. Probably not, really. But I, I, I would like, like I said, I have way too many decks. If you see behind me, well, that's also my boyfriend's decks too. But like, I have like thirteen decks, and it's too much. I never get around to playing all of them. I don't play that much commander. I play once a week, and it's still, I still can't get through all of them. So I'm gonna, I want to disassemble some decks. I want to get to like ten commander decks. That's like the ideal platonic goal in my brain. I don't know why, just ten. 10's already a lot, but like I'm at like 13 and something. And during like lockdown and stuff, I went way higher. I was like at 18 at my peak. I want to slim down. So I really want to go through every single one of my commander decks. I want to play them once, at least once at a table. And I want to marry Kondo it where I want to pick it up. I want to examine each card and be like, does this commander deck spark joy? And if it doesn't, it's gone. I throw it out the window. I chuck it out the window. It's gone. Um, and I'm going to start doing with it. I already picked one deck. I'm not going to announce what it was. Uh, yeah. Okay. It was Minwild the Illusionist. I, I gifted it for a charity event and then I rebuilt it and I played it a couple more times and I was like, you know what? This is too similar to some of my other decks. I'm, it doesn't no longer sparks joy. I do not play it unless I'm basically feel obligated to, I'm going to gift it to a friend. So that's, that's what's happening to Min. It's leaving my collection. I want to do it at least like four more times so I can get to the 10 number. But yeah, too many decks. Too many decks. I need to lower my deck count. Is that a problem with like, other people or no? I have like six decks and I feel like that's too many. I, I have like six paper decks and I'm like, I, why do I need these? This is like, I need like two that I really like that I can bring with me to like a command fest or something. So I think I actually get in overload mode and I have way less than you do. So yeah, it's, I've had the same experience. I, I I'm sorry. I'm like I keep looking over because I have like a a stat like a shelf to my left, uh, and it's just like all blue black X decks. What is your command? I have like sounds right. I was I was always wondering. Are you like above twenty at this point? What? Because like every single time a new uh, set comes out, I know you have a new deck for it. Imagine your shelf behind you, <laughs> but um, I think I now have three three rows oh. of just. All decks and one row specifically is just blue black. Have you ever counted oh, so how no. many you have? Have you ever done an inventory? I haven't. Deck? No, I, I I think at this point I definitely have well over fifteen commander decks. <laughs> wow. And and how often? 
How often do you one play One row that? is like 15, I think. So, so if, we, if we go by that, roughly, I have probably 45 decks. 15 of them are probably commander, uh, blue-black commanders. Yo, we need a so deck you got tour 15, of Crim's decks. You got 15 blue-black decks. You need Kondo to come to your house. I, know. <laughs> I, I thought I, look, I we, do. We all, we all have like hundreds of decks. Every week, we build a deck on Clash. Oh. And they sit in my Goldfish account. Yeah. And they're all available at any time. But assembled and ready to go, I have two decks. Right, yep. and they change all the time. Like whatever I feel like, and whatever I want, I can just assemble the deck from my deck list that I have on Goldfish, or I can make a new deck, most likely, and go with that. So the notion of having like forty-five pre-assembled decks ready to go like blows my mind. <laughs> like a a new staple comes out, what are you gonna do? You're gonna update forty-five decks because it needs to go there. Like that's. How do you even manage that? Do you have 45 opposition agents? Like, what is going on? Well, <laughs> I, I, so I think I have all, I have, the reason why I built that many was because I had that many watery graves, oh right? Because <laughs> I own a lot of watery <laughs> graves. Uh, like, and I'm talking from each printing. So I kind of then just, you know, I, at some point I was like, I think it was after my like 13th Demir deck. I'm like, you know what? Might as well. It's time we just get a random proxy. <laughs> I don't. I don't, don't want to buy any more morphic pools. I'm just gonna. <laughs> but if all your decks are like pools. half proxies, and just might as well not have them assembled, right? They just assemble them. Different. But they're different. That's, they're them. different. Well, that's what I was but gonna ask you. Yeah. Though. Like, how much? How often do you use them? If you have 15 Demir decks, like. When was the last time you played number 15, if ever? Like, do you actually well, play them all uh, ever? It, again, goes in cycles, right? Because, like, hey, a new artwork came out, right? Oh, cool. I'll put it in this deck. And because the new artwork came out, it's the new shiny thing. I'll go back to that. Deck. Mm -hmm. So I, it, it's just like, oh, I always have a deck on hand that I want to play with. Uh, and, and, then, and then, like, I have separate ones that I call, like, my goaded tier. And those are the ones where I play, like, because they're just my favorite. Like, my Zevlar deck and now my Alela deck, right? Those are always just... they. They're always in my backpack. They're always ready to play because I love those decks. But then I have my like my whole Demir row that's all just about like, how yeah, well, if a new card comes out and new art goes in it and it play it matches that, I still get to play blue black and I get to play with new cards. Yeah. I all right. I also think like like for how much you play is also important too. Like I know like Seth only plays for Magic Cons. So like, yeah, mm, I don't right. think you would you should have that many decks. I play once a week, so I should have a couple more just to keep it fresh. And also I don't think it's like wrong to have that many decks, but for me, it's like every six time a new set comes out, I have to think about upgrades and I don't want to think about upgrades for 13 plus decks. It's just too much. And I have to think about them. So no, less, less, please. Less. <laughs> All right, Krim. Hit us with uh, your, your last way to improve your commander experience. All right. Well, much like I want to just dumpster or find a way to stop ramp decks, the last one is, of course, one that is an ever, a never-ending <laughs> uh, journey, and it's to how to dumpster an artifact deck. And I mean, like, absolutely wreck them. That's easy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I feel no. like I'm being no, called out. No, it's not. It's not because cause legitimately artifact decks – and I don't mean the game that was supposed to kill magic. I'm talking about the real artifact decks, which are the menaces, the urzas, the the breas, the a, any form of an artifact deck always has recursion. People are like, oh, just just vandal blast. Oh, oh, I didn't think about that. Why didn't I just blow up all their artifacts? You're right. <laughs> no, like the the only way I have figured out to truly poo poo an artifact deck is to farewell, right? But there's only one. Farewell. So maybe no, I start looking into Archaeomancer looping farewells. That's the game plan, but it's and only choosing artifacts because I I I have done that in my Esper deck. The game plan is to just keep getting farewell back and never choosing creatures. I just choose artifacts and enchantments. So, but like I want more efficient ways to thoroughly dumpster them. Now I know. I know that I can just play Stony Silence, and maybe we just start main decking that randomly. But I, I am tired of artifact decks, so I want to find more efficient ways to beat artifact decks that aren't super narrow, like Stony Silence. Who hurt you, Krim? What artifact <laughs> deck hurt you? It's a sweeper <laughs> in graveyard hate. <laughs> uh, done. Right? <laughs> Collector oof. Done. Collector uh, is bad, though. 
<laughs> but you can tutor it in. You can like court it in when you want. You can do whatever. Oh, and you're, you're in green. Bag. It's a spin. <laughs> in a green or uh, what's that? Bane of progress. Whenever an artifact hits the graveyard, draw a card. That, that Viridian uh, Revel. Viridian Revel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, so I need to play green. Someone, I don't what know. I'm hearing. I, well, like there, green. There's some white, options. red. Because you can play like Relic of Progenitus or whatever, like to unlicensed hearse or whatever. Like there's so much graveyard yeah. hate if you're scared of the recursion. But this then, one is but then easy. Dumpstering narrow. land ramp is hard, but dumpstering artifacts I think is really easy. No, 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 because it's very narrow. The things that you're saying, right? Like I have to now oh. play an unlicensed hearse. So, so sweeper <laughs> and uh, nil hill spell bomb. Uh, what the. Like, what's Those all the graveyard hate we listed, right? The, all, all the, the graveyard hate you guys yeah, have so Lantern. Yeah, yeah, but, but they're uh, all uh, narrow. Let me get dumpstered by artifacts, Tor. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think you've also. There's a lot of cycling graveyard hate, so you can run it without being, like, totally downed. That's fair. That's fair. I guess I just need to play more of it. I think you just like <laughs> I'm I'm a fellow artifact enjoyer. I have two artifact decks. Well, if you cons consider equipment decks an artifact deck, then I have two. Otherwise, I have one. I will say I'll, a vanual blast. It really hurts. <laughs> like <laughs> like like yeah. I could I might have a mass artifact recursion spell if I'm in like white or in I guess red has two. But like it takes a long time. You're knocking me out for a couple of turns, and then I have to get that card. And then yeah, you could just blow it up again. Like Bane of Progress, Vandal Blast, uh, Farewell is the best one. It just destroys everything I hold dear, and then I don't get to play Magic for the rest of the game. That's <laughs> great. Oh, Karn, yeah. the Planeswalker Karn shuts out all activations yeah. of artifacts. That's sad. I do play him in every deck. Very sad times. Do you I do really? play him in every deck. Why? Because He's awful. Because there's enough situations where, like, I can probably pull. Because, like, let's go with exile, right? That's very prominent nowadays. Or, like, I have milled some, like, my, like, artifacts in my grave, or just, like, mana rocks or something like that. I can just minus two and pull from exile. So, like, that's, that's why I play enough artifacts in almost all my decks where I can at least find something to pull. But realistically, the passive is nice. It shuts off a lot of treasures. I can start picking off treasures. You get paired against the Smothering Tithe player. That's cool. <laughs> that's great. I'm glad you have that. But you can't use any of the treasures. I think Karn is good enough to where I just play him in every deck. And that's something I've been doing to just kind of, you know, do a little uh, uh, spring cleaning on artifacts. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> like... I, mean, I love that card. And he's card. Right. Seth, hit us, card. hit us up with the last commander experience improvement tip. Uh, all right. So this actually is kind of similar to Richard's last one, but it's simply play less staples. I don't care about the art. I'm not like not playing my staples because I want to play cooler art. I just want to see more cool magic cards. There's like 30,000 magic cards and I'm building a new commander deck every single week and I probably play like, I don't know, 800 of them in a year or something. Like there's so much out there and commander is the perfect format for this diversity of experience. That's what the format's supposed to be about. So one thing I want to do is downgrade some of my cards to the not best option. Instead of the Signets, pay more three mana mana rocks. Instead of the mana drain, maybe play a counter spell. Things like that. Just not because of the art or anything like that. Just so I can experience more cards on a regular basis because there's so much out there and I feel like I don't get to see enough of it even though I play Commander every week. So that's one thing I want to do is just like Try to lop my list of like, you know, the list of the top 100 cards on EDH rec or something like don't put them in every deck. Not that I'll never play them, but cut them out of some decks and put in other options. So I get to see more cards and have more fun. Sad. Yeah. How, do, how do you make up the power? So, I mean, does so, it really so matter? The, the way you can play janky themes is your your on theme cards are janky and you use powerful staples to level up the power. But if you're also running like janky card draw with your janky win con than your janky wrath like you'll never be able to actually accomplish anything unless everyone else is running an equal level of jank so that's what i struggle with if you run running... janky everything your text is janky this is the guy who, who's run like good card somewhere to kind of level out the power and make it do something excuse right? me mr i run as many spirited companions as possible i i'm sorry if uh <laughs> if, if, if you just st cutting less staples is a. Uh... A weird notion for you. You do it all the time, but you have a bird deck. You have a bird deck. Yeah, and and, and, and what do you all you say it's not a bird deck, it's a Toski deck, right? Because Toski brings the power to the birds. But if I'm like, well, 
let me play garbage Toski instead. <laughs> then I'm just playing a garbage deck. Right? Uh -huh. Like you gotta you gotta have the power budget go somewhere. So how do you how do you do that? But like Synergies. almost every uh, well synergies, but like almost every effect has like the second best option or the third best option or the tenth best option. And I don't think you lose that much. I've been thinking about this with like green card draw. I play the same like uh, return to the wild speaker, rich cars expertise. So same like three cards, maybe the last March of the ends, every single deck. It's the same ones every single time. How much does my deck really lose? If I trade one of those out for souls, majesty, five minute sorcery, draw cards, equal target power creature you control. There's some random uncommon hunters insight. When this creature deal combat damage, uh, draw that many cards. Like th there's like the next best options are not horrible. They're still like functional, They're still right? Very good. I play them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so that's how Richard so maybe knows. so maybe you just play it's all like are them. you gonna are you gonna run a five mana vanilla wrath and white just to <laughs> just to dodge running the staple ones like well, in this case the green second tier is just as good as the green first tier right I but mean, i think I, like there's oh go ahead domer go ahead I mean, like, I, I do it all the time with budget decks. Like, the $50 decks, like, you just can't run Cyclonic. You can't run Manager. And you have to find out. You have to be creative and, and find other things. And I know I know that my decks are not considered, like, the weakest because usually I overcompensate by making the best. You make it up, right? You I make the best $50 else, decks right? possible, right? Like, I go for, <laughs> I go for like, uh, some scary commanders. I go for really good synergy pieces. And, you know, like, you could definitely do it. You don't have to be budget. I'm not saying build budget decks. You just... You, you can use that same mindset where, yeah, it, it totally works. You know, you don't have to run Manager or Cyclonic. You can try out other cards. And I think that's more fun, too, is you get to try out different cards. Like Seth said, you get to try out different cards and see maybe you like them. Maybe you don't like them. Who cares? But maybe you do find some stuff that are like diamonds in the rough, like Fade Away. And even in the, like, Wrath conversation, how much does your deck really lose if you cut... Um, the best white wrath, I don't know, farewell or uh, whatever. How uh, hour of revelation for fumigate or something? I don't think you lose. Like, sure, you like lose a little off the edge, but like, is it really game changing? Or what if you downgrade to Marshall Cube and you make a bunch of tokens with your expensive wrath? Those are cards that I never see and I never play. And I think the like percentage points that I lose, I would make up for with the amount of fun I would have by getting to see all these different cards. So yeah, like sure, maybe my deck's slightly less powerful, but I think in the end I would have so much more fun. It would be worth it. Or sometimes the cart is better in Depends a specific if anime deck. fumigate. Yeah, yeah. 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 there an anime Marshall Coop. <laughs> What's like? It's also true. Like in your token deck, maybe Marshall Coop is actually the right wrath, and you get too locked into the I got to play these three wraths every single time because they're the best ones, and you lose out on something that might actually be better for your deck by doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, I I do I I do that. I mean, like like I played fumigate specifically in like. Uh, one of the clashes where I played a Laurel life gain, where I played the Soul Sisters, I literally play Fumigate because it gains life. Mm -hmm. And my whole purpose was just to gain life, which, by the way, I now get it. I get it. I didn't understand why why life gain was so popular, but now I get it. That's great. <laughs> I mean, you're playing the most optimal card, right? It just happens to be Fumigate in this specific instance. But we're talking about playing a suboptimal card just yeah. for the sake of it. And it's That's like playing suboptimal art cards or whatever. Like, if you do, like, here or there, it's one card out of your deck. Like, it's not going to meaningfully do anything. Yeah. But if you blanket apply it to, like, 30 cards in your deck, your deck, like, just went down, like, two <laughs> tiers in power level, right? If you say, like, I'm going to play no staples out of the top 100 cards, your deck is significantly worse. Uh, so I don't know how you could mitigate that other than everyone in your play group, you know, does that. So then you all drop in power level, and then, you know, we all do the same thing. But it's just, like, everyone declaring, I like... We play Popper Commander, right? Like, honestly, everyone's on the same. Honestly, that'd be a fun though. experiment. Like, imagine just like trying to build the best decks possible, not running the top thirty staples or something. I would love to do that. Yeah, but then just the next tier would become staples, right? No, no, <laughs> they played against style. other people, S other people's decks. I think certain commanders Ooh. would just do that, right? Like, if I played Zada, I bet you like none of the guards in that deck have any staples whatsoever because yeah. I run yeah, nonsense. Yeah, I play Corval, I get a four yeah. to play like terrible Blasphemous Act. <laughs> well, or something. something right but then <laughs> yeah some cards are busted with certain commanders or stuff like that is what i mean but yeah i think that'd be fun i don't know like don't go all overboard but like yeah try more all right someone someone's got to get a bingo score sheet here as we work <laughs> our way through this year's commander clash uh how many suboptimal art cards that are combo <laughs> finishes that punish <laughs> artifacts are we gonna see <laughs> we'll see uh 
Let's see if our gym memberships are used this year. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I'm going, baby. It works, but have you ever been to the gym in January? It's disgusting. But February, February. Yeah, yeah February. That's, that's, that's like, why, that's like, why it's empty. Is where it's at. It's empty. That's why I don't go to the gym <laughs> in January or February. Because it's too packed yeah, or after. Meta gaming. You yeah. Be more efficient with your time. I'm just, just waiting. January. Yeah, I'm just waiting yeah. until like way later, and then I'll go for sure. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let us know what your commander experience improvement tips are. Have we missed any? Uh, I- I'm curious about deck choices. Do people explicitly not avoid staples? Like I, I, I really like some of the old episodes where we play sets of like you can only use cards from Mirage. Yeah, and you see like some really weird cards from Magic's history. Yep. Uh, so do you guys ever do that? Uh, do you need to punish a certain play style? Do you want to play a different play style? Maybe the artifact player is like, well, now that Crim's out to get me, I'm going to play enchantments. <laughs> 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 Which is fine, by the way. You can play enchantments. <laughs> so let us know in the comments and uh, we'll see you all back here next week. See ya.